Good morning, Prince and Princess. Good I don't hear you. Good morning, Prince and Princess. Good morning. Happy Sabbath. Some of you don't answer me, maybe. I don't know. One of my brothers don't answer me. Good morning, Prince and Princess. Good morning. All right. I don't know. There's a problem with the mic. Like last Sabbath, there was a sound problem. I hope it works. Good, the mic. Okay. This week, I don't know if anybody can help me. With the sound, I don't know. Okay. You always have a background sound that bad. I hope this time is better than last week. One more time, I would like to thank my Father God, the King of Kings, to give me that opportunity to be with you and Emmanuel SDA Church at Eustis. And I would like to thank Sabbath School. One more time, Pastor Don, also Pastor Williams, that give me that opportunity also, the elders of the church. We are about to go to the lesson. Just before we go to the lesson, this week lesson, let's go back from last week. Last week it was about motivated by hope. You remember? Eh? Motivated by hope. What was that hope? It was about the second coming of Jesus Christ. This is the Christian hope. If somebody tells you I'm Christian, they don't have that hope, that means they're not Christian. That's our only hope. That's the only hope for planet Earth. And there was a Bible text. I'm going to see if you remember it. This Bible text that talk about the judgment. Where did we find it last week? It was in Daniel chapter 8, verse 14. Are you with me? Are you with me? I would like you to be with me together, okay? I don't want to do it like last week. I'm going to give you more time to, to talk today. And Daniel chapter 8 verse 14. What was about Daniel 8 14? 2,300 days and the sanctuary will be cleansed. I did the math two times last week. If, can someone, if someone give me the math in two minutes, I give you one of those books. Because I, you know we are the people of the book. This message is the one that makes us different from all the other uh, denomination that have because the sanctuary only the Seventh-day Adventists preach about sanctuary. You know that? Only us. That makes us different from all the other religions. Do you know that? So you have to know the sanctuary by heart. Is that correct? Because that is our pillars as Seventh-day Adventists. So this math, eh? You remember it in Daniel 8, 14, if someone give me the mouth, I give you. I have the great controversy here, and I have Bible readings. This one have all the 28 beliefs, okay? And I have a great controversy. If someone give me the mouth, even you're not great, get all of them, I will give you one of those books. Anybody want to challenge? All right. Try. Good. Sister, I'm try. <laughs> Sister Kita. Good. Okay. So, um... The prophecy came to Daniel, and the beginning of um, the prophecy was when the order would be given for the Jerusalem to be rebuilt. Yes. And that was Ezra. Okay, it was the king told Ezra, you have permission to go um, build the sanctuary. And that's in Nehemiah somewhere. I don't know exactly where. Okay, so the math of the Ezra's. 2,300. Yeah, and it's in the beginning of that, um, the year was 497. 457. 457, sorry, I was close. Right. That's good. <laughs> I was close. Yes. Right. Yeah, it was the King Artaxerxes uh -huh. um, to Ezra the priest. And 457. And it and who? And the um and then the prophecy 23 days, and it's a day for a year, 
So that 23, in the middle of that, there was going to be cut off because uh-huh. Jesus came, lived, and died in the middle. But it ended in 1844. All right. And the middle of this one, we have 490. That is the 70 weeks. And the middle of the 2300, do you remember anything about the 490? I think my sister already won. The 490 years. Start when, finish when. I think sister, my sister went. So I'm going to give you the book because we have a busy day today. Is that correct? We have communion, board. I need to finish before time today. So I think she won. Are you agree with me? Eh? So which one you want? I have the Bible readings. You will be able to do Bible study from this book. Bible question and answers. And it, it, it's all the 28 beliefs. So you can, after reading it, you can have, you can study with anybody. That's good. So if you have any visitors, not SDA, that need a good controversy, I will give this one away. So let's make it quick. So she, she start well, 457, do what? Two year, huh? 1844, that give us what? 2,300 years. That is the longest prophecy that we have in the Bible, Daniel 8, 14. And from there, we have what? We have insight 70 weeks for the Jewish nation. The 70 weeks start from 457, adding from where? Year 34, when the stone stiffened. So inside these this 70 weeks, we have one week. Okay? We have, we have a seven weeks. Sorry, we have a seven weeks inside the 70 weeks. The seven weeks is to rebuild what? The temple of the Jerusalem. So from here, if you have the date, from 457 to 408, if you go seven by seven, seven times seven, we got what? 49, we have 49 years. You know a date, a day is for what? One year, eh? prophecy according uh, Ezekiel 4 verse six. So we have this prophecy, the 49 years for the Jewish to build the temple Start from 457 to 408. That gave you 49 years, seven by seven. Okay? So after these seven weeks, we have another 62 weeks. The 62 weeks start when? From the year 408, eh? after this one, is going to finish when the Messiah will be anointed. Are you with me? Are you together? Are we together? So when the prophet prophesy, uh, uh, the Messiah will be anointed, the Hamashiach, that is Jesus. That is when Jesus is about to get baptized. And we see it in Act 10, 38, Jesus get anointed the day of his baptism. And this, go to what year? The 62 weeks. Go to what year? Year 27, when Jesus get baptized by John the Baptist. We see that story in Matthew chapter 3. The Holy Spirit came as a dove. The Father said, this is my beloved son. And after we have another week left, are you with me? We already have about 485 years here. So we have another week left. Okay? We have another week left. We have, a, we have 483 years from 457 to year 27 AD. So what will happen in that one week left? Are we together? Sister Wood, you are with me? Are you following us, Sister Wood? Is everything okay? Okay. All right. So, this week that is left, start from where? From the day Jesus Christ dies. Are you with me? So, we have this one, the half of the week, the day Jesus Christ dies. What happened? The anointed got cut off. Okay, that was year 31 AD. We have half of the week from year 26. Half of the week. So we have another half of the week left. Okay, we'll give you one week, seven days. That gives you a week. What happened in year 34? We explained it. The stone stiffened. Uh, 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 this is where uh, uh, Stephen died, so the probation for the Jewish people is finished. Now God going to send his messenger where? to the Gentiles, the Gohim, 
This is where Paul now and Silas, they go into preach where? Those Gentiles. God is calling all nations now. All right? So we have the 490. Uh, years, that is the 70 week from 457 to year uh, 34. So we have 118, 10 years left. If you take uh, 490 plus 180, 10, that gives you how many years? 2,300 years. So finally, 1844, October 22nd, what happened exactly? You all know what happened, eh? William Miller was preaching, Jesus is going to come back because to cleanse the sanctuary, they know that was half the sanctuary. But there was no half the sanctuary at that time. Is that correct? You remember there was three temple or three tabernacles. The first one was made by Moses. We are about to see that in the sanctuary. And that was the second one from where? From Solomon, about year 800. So finally, we find when they, they, in 605, when the Babylonian they get, they destroy that temple. So when Atasasas gave his decree, you know, from Daniel 9, 23 to 27, we have exactly the date where now they're going to rebuild the sanctuary by Atasasas, Nehemiah, Zerubbabel, and they build that sanctuary. You know, he would have to, have to make a work on this sanctuary. And finally, in year 70, what happened? Titus destroyed the temple. There was no temple since year 70 in Jerusalem. So about what century that need to be cleansed? It's where we're going today. This week's lesson is about light from where? From the sanctuary. So we already went to these maths. So let's go straight to the lesson. And the beginning of the lesson, the author tried to compare it, Daniel 7 and Daniel 8. When we put the parallel, what do you see? In Daniel 7, what do we see? In Daniel 7, what do we see? We see Babylon. Is that correct? In Daniel 8, we don't have Babylon. Can someone tell me why? In Daniel 8, we don't have Babylon. Can someone tell me why? When we compare those two chapters, in Daniel 7, we have Babylon, and Daniel 8, we don't have Babylon. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Huh? So, we don't have Babylon, it's temple. It's because at that time, there was no Babylon. Daniel is already in Persia. Are you with me? So, major Persia, this is why we don't have it. So, in Daniel 7, we know also it's the lion. You, you know, when God wants to give a message, do you know God give it repeatedly? He repeat the same message every time in different form? Why God do that? Do you know why? Do you have an idea? Good. Good. So God likes to repeat it different way. You know, it's already in Daniel chapter 2. Lion, you know, that is, that is the one with the gold. That is, you know, uh, yeah? And the statue in chapter 2. The, the one that is the, the, the goal is, is, is what? It, eh? Babylon. After we have the silver in chapter 2, the same message, God going to repeat it different ways. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? So, we have Medo Persia here, and as what? As a bear. Are you with me? And Daniel chapter 8, we have it as ram. Okay? And Daniel chapter 7, after we have Greece. You know? Greece is what country? Greece with Alexander the Great. Greece. And after we have Greece also has goat here. And Daniel chapter 8, at the end we have also the, the furious beast that look like dragon. That is the worm, eh? the furious beast. And we have it at the small horn, the little horn. And Daniel 8, that will cast down the truth. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Okay. So finally, they all finish almost the same. Daniel chapter 7 finished by judgment. What do you see in that judgment? You, we, see, we see God the Father. Eh? We are about to speak about it soon. And we see the Son of Man that will come in Daniel chapter 7 from 7 to 9. And verse 13, we see the Son of Man in Daniel chapter 7. 
And to finish Daniel chapter 8, we have what also? Daniel 8, 14, the purification, the cleansing of the sanctuary. So, and the lesson, we are about to see the two sanctuaries, the purification, the judgment, mercy and justice, the lawyer and intercessor. So we're not going to see Monday, uh, Sunday, Tuesday, we're going to the lesson and to see, we're going to cover everything in the next max 30 minutes. It's a busy day today. So let's go through. To understand the sanctuary, eh? to understand the sanctuary, you need to go where? You need to go on where? On the, eh? on the wilderness, when Moses built the sanctuary. So where we get this idea? You know, some people, they say there is a sanctuary in heaven. Even, they say, even some Adventists don't believe there is a sanctuary in heaven. That's sad, huh? If there is no sanctuary, brothers and sisters, how God going to communicate the plan of salvation? Where you find God ways? When you read Psalm 77, verse 13, I know sometimes my sister will, you don't have your mic. Psalm 77, verse 13, God ways is where? You want to read it, sister? Sometimes you can read for us with the mic. God ways, brother Derek, God ways is in the sanctuary. Go ahead, my brother. God will be your tabernacle. God, mm -hmm. God, Jesus. Yes. Revelation 22. Yes. I Pastor. think there's another thing too. Uh, most churches, they stop at the cross. That they died, they confess my sins to him, therefore I'm saved. That's it. And that you and I, we can just apply the blood. They don't understand that. They believe, and this is where, this is the main point. They believe that uh, when they died, their sins were paid for, and that's all I have to do. Everything done that. Yeah. That's true. Thank you. It's what I believed when I was at Sunday church, too. That's true. That's true. <laughs> yes. So, where we get that idea, there is a sanctuary in heaven. The first Bible text that speaks about that is in where? We are in Exodus chapter 28, verse 8 and 9. I, have, I took the King James Version. And let them, can you read it? Those who speak good English, can you read it for me, please? My sister, give me a smile, please. Is everything okay, my sister? All right. So give me, give me, give me, uh, can someone read it? Sister Tika, uh, uh, my sister. 25, 8, and 9. I take the King James Version. What did it say? And let them make me. May and I may dwell among them. Who's talking here that God to Moses? Moses was the mediator. So, question Can God please and the sanctuary make with man hand? Huh? How will you explain that? I will, I will dwell. Them. How how you explain that? Let's let's talk, brothers and sisters. Huh? Can God live and uh, something make by man hand? Huh? No. So the presence of God of God, we can we will see it after in First Corinthians 3, 16, 17. The sanctuary now is you and I. Your body is what? The temple of the Holy Spirit. God will live in us. Okay, but his presence will show. And the sanctuary. Verse 9. According to all that I showed you, after the pattern of the tabernacle and the pattern of all the instruments thereof, even so shall you make. So, this is the idea we have here. So, in heaven, we have what? A sanctuary. We have the original. When you have the original, you have a copy. What happened to the copy? It's going to come a certain day. The copy will need, will be not able to see. It's going to go fade, fade, fade until it's gone. But the original, what happened? Go, going to remain. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? I want to fail you. So this is the idea. We make sure exactly there is a sanctuary in heaven. 
we can go to John. Where John have his vision? Where, 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 where John see Jesus? And, and when you read John chapter 1, where, where he see Jesus? And the middle of the candle, eh? the seventh candle. That was in the sanctuary. Also in chapter 11 of Revelation, also John saw the sanctuary, the temple. Oh, so, so when someone says there is a sanctuary in heaven, you know, I don't know what they have in mind. So to understand the sanctuary in heaven, we need to understand what? The sanctuary on earth. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? So how was the sanctuary on earth? Here I have the picture. You can stop me anytime. Eh? Stop me anytime. You can add anytime. We have the sanctuary here. And the sanctuary here, that is the sanctuary on earth. You know, I said, where those men, they learn? They were not engineers. Eh? You see how God worked. They didn't go to school to learn how to build sanctuary, build house. But God used his Holy Spirit. He used those young men to make it exactly how they were not. When Moses were found, the, 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 the original, they were not there. But the Holy Spirit used them. But amen. Amen, amen. Praise be to God for that. Huh? So, we have here the sanctuary. Moses made that the sanctuary. The people is a portable. Huh? Portable sanctuary. We have the tent. The people live all around. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? You see those tents here. The people are the tent. But in the sanctuary, what we have here? We have three parts. Is that correct? How many parts we have in the sanctuary? What is the first part? Let's start. What we have in the out of court? Huh? We have two men thing in the out of court. What we have? First we have what? Holy. Huh? The holy and the most holy. Yeah. We, are, we, we are outside. We're still outside. We're going there. That's the next part. So at the outside we have two men thing. We have what? The sacrifice altar. To burn the offerings, and after we have what the lover, are you with me? Before the priests get help, the priests have to do what? Before they get inside, they have to wash themselves. That represent what? Before you go to Christ, you have to accept the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Is that correct? You cannot come to Jesus Christ without it, accepting His sacrifice at the cross. Someone that say, "I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe He died at the cross." That person cannot accept Jesus Christ. Are you with me? After you do that, what you have to do after you believe in Jesus Christ, you accept him, you have to get baptized. Huh? You have to wash away your sin. And, and you read in Acts chapter 2, 37, Peter said, baptize and you will receive what? The gift of Holy Spirit and remission for your sins. You have to wash away your sin by baptism. So now we go in from outside uh, from outside in the courtyard, we go into the holy. Are you with me? The courtyard, we see, we have the altar of burnt offerings, and what else? The lava. So, we have all those texts here to prove what we are saying. So, we go into the next part. I know you are smart, I want to see. Uh, the next part, we go into the holy place. When we go to the holy place, what? how many things we find? Uh, we find Three men things. Are you with me? So what is? We find the candle. Eh? The seven candle. The lamp. We studied that last time. Three, three weeks ago. And Zechariah chapter 4. We find the lamp step. What is the lamp step represent? Represent what? Jesus is the light of the world. Are you agree with that? And also the word of God. Psalm 119 verse 105. Eh? So, Jesus is the light, and Matthew chapter 5 also, we are the light of the world. Is that correct? So we need the light when you're getting. After we find what else? The shoe bread. How many bread was in the shoe bread? Twelve. Represent the twelve tribes. And they have to change them every Sabbath. Are you with me? So all of that represent who? Jesus. Jesus in John chapter 6. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Are you with me? All the sanctuary is Jesus. Are you with me? Those were tied. Eh? Jesus is the what? Eh? So, Jesus.
discussing um, the word of life in John chapter 6 after the miracle of the bread. So we know that man should not live only by bread, eh? by the word of God. Matthew chapter 4. So finally, after the shoe bread, we have what else left? The altar of incense. So we have the altar of incense. So if we see here, we have the first pot, the shoe bread, the candle, the lamp, eh? and the altar of incense. Altar of incense is what? You know, when you're getting there, all those blood that were stay here, they're going to get smell. Are you with me? Of sin, they are very smell. Second, God, God knows of, of sin. So they have to put this when they, every day they have to make sure they get oil in it, or it's to work when they get in. So what happens? They can smell good. All right? So, when we take that incense also, when you read in Revelation, that is the prayer of the, of the saints. So now, this is where we need to go. We need to go to the most holy. The holy, holy, holy. The most holy. It's where we want to go. Is that correct? So we already go to the holy place. Now we want to go to the most holy. And the most holy, what we have? What we have at the most holy? Eh? The ark of Huh? Ark of the covenant of God. Inside the ark, we have the law of God, the Ten Commandments. That's true. And after we find the manna and also the stuff of our own inside. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? So, when we get there, brothers and sisters, it's where we need to stay for this week lesson. So, we have the earthly sanctuary. So what about in the heavenly sanctuary? If we go back to this place, if we go back the first court yard, every day there was sacrifice going on. Is that correct? The priests, not the high priests, have to offer all those animals every day. <coughs> they have to kill different animals. It depends on your, of, of your, of your sin. You can read that in Leviticus chapter 16. And Leviticus chapter 23. Also, if you want to read it and the great controversy, you go into the chapter 23 and 24 of the great controversy. And chapter 28 of the great controversy, you can read this week lesson where? On chapter 28 of the great controversy. So, when they get there, on the courtyard, there was sacrifice, I said, every day. Daily sacrifice. Okay? So, the person that sent, let's say you bring your lamb, you are the one that to kill that lamb. When you kill that lamb, the priest take what? The blood. Eh? He's going to bring the blood where? To the corn of the altars, and he's going to take them. And the holy, not the most holy. Okay? They have to burn this sacrifice. Some of those sacrifices sometimes... The priest can eat the meat sometimes. It depends. They pass some parts. And when we go to the holy place, do we have daily sacrifice? Huh? To the most holy place, do we have sacrifice every day? Yes. Not every day. Once a year. That's why it's where we want to go. Once a year, the high priest have to come to the what? They call it Yom Kippur. Okay, Yom and Ibu, that is, Yom and Ibu, that is what? Day. Kippur and Ibu, that is expiration. Atonement. What mean atonement? What mean atonement? Cleanse. What else we find for atonement? I want to fill you the class. What we, what we find for atonement again? It's like reparation. If you go to dictionary, yes, forgiveness. And that's why, that, yes, when, when, when I take that word also, I see it's like at one man. It's like God going to examine us one by one in that day. So let's go to see in the temple. In the temple, we see the true sanctuary, the true sanctuary. So we are very sure we have a true sanctuary on heaven. There is no way for people to say there is no 
to sanctuary and heaven. We already went to that. So how was that day that called the purification day? That is the October 22nd. They call it also what? Yom Kippur. What happened on that day? Let's go to that day. What happened? The priest, the high priest, have to take what? He have to confess for his sin of also the sin of his family. The high priest have to take about seven days of preparation. Do you hear me, brothers and sisters? How many days? Seven days of preparation. And that seven days, Ellen G.Y. even go far, say, he not even eat meat in that day. And this preparation day, no meat, stay away and get prepared. Why? The high priest need to do that. If the high priest not confess his sin, what will happen with the high priest? When he go to the holy place, holy, holy, he will be dead in that day. He have to confess his sin. So for one week, he will prepare, ask God for forgiveness. But when it's come, the Yom Kippur day, that is the, and the tenth month eh, of the seventh day, what he's going to do now? He's going to take a ball. When he take that ball, this ball, he's going to kill that ball. To bring the blood where? On the most holy place. He will put it where? You see, there is a place called mercy seat. Okay, that is where the cover of the uh, covenant ark. He's going to take that blood from the ball. He's going to seven times to sprinkle that blood and to ask God forgiveness for what? For his sin. And he's going back again. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Outside there were two goats. Those two goats, one for God and one for Azazel, that is Satan. But they're going to cast lot. Are you with me? So they're going to pray to cast lot. The priest is going to choose one for God, one for who? Satan, Azazel. The one for God is going to kill that one. He's going to take the blood again. He's going back to the most holy to do what? To cleanse with that blood the holy, holy place, the sanctuary. And now after he do that, the same way, we call it seven times, and the uh, mercy seat. The mercy seat is the cover that is all in gold, that is covered the Ark of the Covenant. Inside the Ark of the Covenant, we have the Ten Commandments, manna, and word of arm. Finally, he's going back outside now. He's going to put his two hands on the other God, the certain God. What he's going to do here? He's going to confess all the sin of the nation. After he's transferred all those sins from the nation to that Azazel God, they're going to send that God on the wilderness. That God represents who? Satan. That will be for 1,000 years eh? on the wilderness. There will be no people of God to bother. Eh? For 1,000 years, you will be where? And heaven, Revelation chapter 20. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? So finally, in that day, the people, they have their parts to do. They have to afflict their soul. Is that correct? And Leviticus 23, 27. And no secular activities. If somebody is fine, they find somebody doing the activity, what they will do that day? Eh? You will be cut off from the nation. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? What else? You already explained that. And finally, is going to be the same thing on the heaven. And the day that call what? Atonement day. The cleansing day. Start when? We already have it. October 22nd, 1844. We explained it last week. If you missed last week's lesson, you go to Emmanuel uh, or YouTube, you will find it. So, the judgment will start where? In the house of God. It's what Peter said in 1 Peter 4, verse 17. The judgment will start where? In the house of God. Ezekiel 9, all the elders, from the elders, elders, be careful elders, pastors, okay? The judgment will start from you guys. And go to the last one, in the house of God. Why? Because all men have to judge. No matter who you are, you need to judge. You're going to judge. But the good news, we have a lawyer. And that judgment, amen? amen. That lawyer, who, who is that lawyer? And second, amen. And second John chapter 2, verse 1, we have Jesus, our lawyer. 
All we need to do in 1 John 1, verse 8 and 9, we need to confess our sin. We come, we have the high priest, the high priest that is Jesus. And, you know, this is the Bible text we have for the memory text. We have searched, eh? we are in Hebrews chapter 8, 1 and 2. We have searched a high, who is sitting at the right hand of the throne of the majesty of the, in the heaven, a minister or at the sanctuary. So, she continued with verse 5. And Hebrews chapter 8. They said if it was in the, in the past time, there was no way for Jesus to be a priest, high priest. If it was in the, when we were under the law. Eh? At Moses' time, there was no way for Jesus to be a priest. And when we read it, in the next verse, we know from verse 3 and 4, why the author say that? What, what the author tried to explain? You remember the order of Melchizedek? Who can be a high priest at that time? You have to be from what tribe? Levi, is that correct? So Jesus was from what tribe? Judah, so there was no way. So the author explained it right. So I think my sister, that is Sister Mark, have something to say. Sister Mark, go ahead. I have a question. In studying the lesson, it's talking about how Jesus is interceding for us now in the most holy place. And as he's advocating for us, say, he, this is just a question that came into my mind. If he comes to my name and I'm not ready and he, you know, cast me out of the book, but I'm still alive and I do come to Christ at that time, is it too late or he'll say my blood is sufficient? Good, thank you, Sister Mark. If you read in chapter 28 of Greek Controversy, that gives you about the investigative judgment, all those explained. Jesus, as a lawyer, and you know, and if you go also in Daniel chapter 7, verse 8 and 9, when, when the, uh, the elder of the day, that is God the Father, and the Son of Man, and Daniel 7, verse 30, come, and that judgment, so every day there is judgment in heaven. Starts in 1840, 1844, start from those because sin was stuck in the heaven from Adam, Eve, all those sins. So let's say they get to your name. You don't know when your name is going to call in heaven because there is judgment going on. But if they get to your name, let's say when they get to your name, you are about to speak bad about your brother and your sister. Huh? You are about to speak bad about the pastor, the elders. Oh, they don't do that. You're only talking bad every time. They get to your name, you're doing only bad, talking bad. And you know in that judgment, even anything you say, everything you even think, you're going to judge for that. And that judgment day, I'm going to answer your question, I'm still in the lesson. You know, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 13 and 14, God will call everybody on judgment, even things you do in the dark. Do you know God see an ant in a dark room, you know, under a walk in the dark room? God see everything you're doing. The pastor don't know what you're doing. I cannot see what you're doing. This week you can come here, you look like a saint, but I don't know what you're doing this week. But everything you do, it's right in front of God in heaven. Do you know that? Because there's a camera on you. So let's see they get to your name, Sister Mark. I'm about to finish to answer your question, they get to your name, you're doing good on that day. Let's say that day you're calling Pastor Johnson, you pray with him, you're calling Brother James, you check in on him, praying together and encourage people, sick people you're visiting, that's good. You're doing good and, and that. Finally, let's say they get to your name, you was doing bad, but God knows you're going to confess. When you confess, God don't say go and do it again. You know, some people, they take it as Granted, and because Jesus is in heaven, I have a lawyer, I'm going to send, send, send. But do you know what the Bible said in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26 and 27? The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, if you send what? Volunteer. You know it. You keep doing it. Jesus will not be able to do nothing for you. His blood will. You can read it in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26, if you don't believe me. The blood of Jesus will, because you do sins that you know it's not good, and you keep on doing it. Finally, going to sin against the Holy Spirit. And as long as you sin against the Holy Spirit, in Matthew 12, Jesus said there is nothing we can do for you. But when you do that sin by accident, John 
said, I write you this letter, Second John chapter 2, verse 1, you can send by accident. Not, now what happened? You come, you come first. You say, Father, I'm sorry. You have to cry to God. David cried in Psalm 51 after Bathsheba sinned. Cry to God. Say, I'm sorry I do it. Help me not to do it again. God already see you're going to do that. Even if you do something wrong, bad. God say, Father, look, she's going to do that next month, not month, next year. She's going to do that next, next two years. Please, Father, look, look my hand. Look my hand for, for Sister Mark. Yeah. So God the Father look my hand and say, okay. You already gave your, your, your blood for Sister Mark. There is nothing I can do for that. Praise God, we have a lawyer now in heaven. Eh? Yeah. That is the good news of the sanctuary. You don't have to scare of judgment. Are you with me, brothers and sisters? But what happened to those wicked people? They don't have a lawyer. When will be the judgment? After the 1,000 years. The Jesus we have now has lawyer. He will become what? Judge. Let's say you don't make it to heaven. Your lawyer become your judge. You know in John 5, the Bible, Jesus said, God, Father, will not do the judgment. I will be the one to do it. Let, the lawyer know everything about you. Because the lawyer, when you go to your lawyer, say, don't lie to me. Tell me everything. I will know how to defend you in court. Are you with me? Jesus knew everything about you. Now your lawyer become your judge. <laughs> Do you think you can escape? There will be no way to escape. Eh? So this is the best thing. We have a lawyer now. And that uh, uh, judgment that's going on every day in heaven. You, you was going to add something, Sister Mark? Yes, I I'm still not clear. I just want scripture for it. You know, we say that he'll forgive us, but when he comes to my name, what if I'm not in the stage, like you're saying, of asking for forgiveness? But down the line, I do. It, is it too late? That's all. I'm, you don't have to go into all of that. Is it too late if he comes to my name and I'm not ready? But then he, you know, down the line, I do want to give my heart to God. Okay. Is it too, I just need to know, is it too late once he comes to as, your as name? As long as you confess with sincere heart, there is no too late for Christ. There is no sin God cannot erase. You know, no matter the color of the sin. I know, but Eric wants to say something. Eric wants I just to want to say one thing. I just need a scripture. Mm -hmm. Great controversy is great. But yes. what does the word, if I wanted to okay. tell somebody the, the scripture, what scripture Write it I down, I gave it to you already. First John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. Write it down, please, Sister Mark. First John chapter 1, verse 8 and 9. There is no sin God cannot forgive if we confess, if, if we confess with a sense, with a humble heart, God is ready to forgive us. And, and I know also, we, we, we need to finish. Eh? Judgment. Judgment is going on now in heaven. And God look at your name every day. So it's, it's not a matter that that is going to come down to, to my name in alphabetical order. God look at our names every day. When he said, as you say, you mentioned the scripture, my little children, I say, beg you to sin. Don't sin. But if you sin, you have an advocate. Jesus is our, is our advocate. The time will come when he said, he, it, it is done. It is done. He that is filthy, let him be filthy still. He that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. Amen. So that is when your name yeah. will out. Revelation are, are chapter accepted. 22, verse... Uh, uh, 11 and 12 is what you just said. That is worthy. And God. Jesus is coming also with his reward. Revelation 22, verse 12. Yes, my sister. Yes. And when you come. Not guilty. Amen. 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 
man. So when God see us in the judgment, God not see us, he see Jesus. Amen. Yes, amen. And, and just the fact that, that you're wanting to confess your sin, you're seeking forgiveness, that means the Holy Spirit has not been withdrawn from your life. Yes. That's because, the, so that means you still have a conscience. Yes. That that's still good. small voice is still talking that's to you. Good. So that's what we want. We want. We don't want to silence that still small voice. Mm -hmm. So just the fact that you're wanting to confess your sin, yeah. that means God is, is Jesus is okay. still working. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Praise because God. when 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 it's come time, you don't hear nothing tell you. You sin sin become you know a habit of your life. That means you already gone. <laughs> Holy Spirit already leave you. It will be too late. Like Sister Max said, it's gonna be too late when there is no voice tell you what you're doing is wrong. Pastor Johnson. Well, I think the way to end it, uh, her question here is my simple answer. Basically, God knows the end from the beginning. Yes. I have to be ready at all times. Yeah, I make mistakes every day, but I have to confess those and get victory over those. And I ask the Holy Spirit to empower me to do that. And I can't. I don't have time to worry if I'm saved or not saved. Uh, every day, I have to make sure. Ready. When. And really, the judgment here going through all this is not for God, really. It's, it's for the universe and for you and me to see, well, why is my mother there? Why is my brother there? And we always see it in the judgment. God has, God's bent over backwards to show us why those people are not here and that he did everything to save those people. So, so thank you, Pastor. So now we are on what Pastor Johnson said. We are in Revelation chapter 20. 20 when books are open. You know, when books open, we have three books. We have Book of Remembrance at, in Malaika chapter 3. We have Book of Life in Revelation chapter 20, and also Book of Sin. Anything we do, it's record. It's write in a book. And do you know the Book of Life? I'm going to say something. Maybe some of you know, maybe. Some of you don't know, maybe. Do you know? Everybody, their name is in the Book of Life. Everybody before you born, let's say a car. You know when a car gonna come, they have that car one year before. They when it's come to, they already sell this car gonna come out 2025. The car already here in 2024. Oh, are you with me? When's come the time the car gonna be out? Are you with me? God have you in a book before you come in life with Psalm 139. So God already know who's going to make it. <laughs> He's going. He already know who's going not to make it. He already knew, but He respect your choice. You are the one. If you choose to sin, it's your choice. You respect it. If you choose not to sin, if you sin by accident, by mistake, you ask for forgiveness. Okay? But you can, this is why in Revelation chapter 3, God said, Jesus was talking to the seven churches, he said, don't blot out your name from the book of life. Because everybody name, God select everybody to be in heaven. This is why John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. Okay? Everybody. But you are the one that will put your name out of the book of life. Yes. Amen. I'm going to take one last person because it's time to finish. Anybody have a question about, because we already covered. If we see, let me why talking about as the book of record are opening in the judgment, the lives of all who have believed on Jesus come and with you before God. Beginning with what? Those who first live upon the earth. Our advocate presents the case of each successive generation and close with the living. Every name is mentioned. Every case closely investigated. Names are accepted, names rejected. Are you with me? All who have truly represented our sin and by faith claim the blood of Christ. We already see that, we already say all those. So we take with controversy, brothers and sisters. So when we stand on that judgment day, we can be here because we're not going to judge with the wicked. Why? Because Jesus will come back with what? With his reward. Because he already classed the saved and the unsaved. So now, Jesus is 
gonna live soon at the holy, holy place. After he leave the most holy place, what will be happen that time? Eh? All case done. Probation closed. And the smoke gonna come out and the Ten Commandments will be hand in heaven. Everybody will see the Ten Commandments. That's what we're going to study next week. The next week we will see uh, a light. Uh, sorry, we will see uh, you need to turn on my Okay, next week we will see about God's law and His government. May God bless you and know that we have to be always ready, brothers and sisters. You don't know when your name is going to be called up in heaven. We see the three steps is always believe the sacrifice, the first courtyard, the sacrifice of Christ. By what? By getting baptism, that is the water that you wash the, 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 before they get inside, the cleansing water. Uh, and after when we get inside, we know exactly inside the first what we have in the coach and, and, the, and, the, and the holy. We have the shoe bread, uh, all of those who present Jesus Christ. The lampstand and the altar of the uh, altar of incense. And we go to the most high, we have the what they call the Ark of Covenant. All of them represent who? Jesus Christ. Those were tight, and Jesus is the anti tight. They were shadow. Now we're living the reality and Jesus Christ. May God bless you. Just before you close, um, in reference to what Sister Mark was saying, um, but I just wanted to share 1 John 2 and verse 1. I know something mentioned, you said that before, but it says, my little children, I write unto you that he sin not. But if, if any man sin, uh, if, if any yeah. man sin, we have one and advocate with the Father Jesus Christ the righteous. So you Amen. And Jesus never lose cases. Amen. With Jesus we go into one. As long as we see that sanctuary, he is the judge for Amen. So he is in business of cleaning sins in heaven, eh? You know, so may God bless you. And one more time, study for next week. Next week we will see the law of God. That is the government of God. God need law. We will see the dragon that is uh, fights against the woman and revelation. We will see that next week, chapter 14, verse 17, how the church of God that keep God's commandment, the law of God will be the church that Satan will persecute. May God bless you. I love you and happy Sabbath. I have a gift for a visitor, not seven day Adventist. We have a friend, not seven day Adventist. I have a Greek controversy. All right. That's your gift.